Hello, welcome back. Um, so, uh, hopefully you watched uh, the two videos prior to this one. So, 6-1 part 1, 6-1 part 2. So, this is 6-1 part 3. I'm still just working on the notes. It's um, the way to solve a system. Remember, when we're working with two equations, and see where they intersect if you graph them. Or we've learned that they could be parallel and never have an intersection. They would have no solution. Or we even learned there was that third kind of weird option where you graph a line and then the other line is the exact same graph. So literally they're lying on top of one another and they have infinite solution because every stinking point is the same on both. So we have one solution, blink. No solution, same slope. They never cross. That means same slope, different y-intercept. And then we have same slope, same y-intercept, infinite solution. So we have those three options. So let's recall what we've covered on our notes. So the notes was 6-1 graphing system in class notes. We've already done the concept summary in the back. That was part one. And then I did part two which was question one and two. And right now I'm gonna do three and four. So um, I'm gonna get these done right now. So I like to start with the graphing just for, I don't know, no, no reason. I just like to do the graphing first. So I'm gonna graph. Now remember, there's only three possibilities. They could intersect in one point, they could intersect in no points, or they could intersect in all points. So I'm gonna grab a marker. Sorry, didn't prepare myself properly here. Here we go. Okay, so let's make a little prediction here. Let's, let's make a prediction, right? So I have this great question. I see I have a slope of four and I have a slope of two. Well, that tells me right away it's not gonna be parallel with a different white intercept because first of all, the slopes are different. The number in front of X is our slope and they're different slopes. So it can't be this one, same slope, same y-intercept, and it can't be this one, same slope, same y-intercept. So it has to be something that intersects somewhere, somewhere on that graph. If they have different slopes, they're gonna intersect somewhere. And they're gonna intersect somewhere on this graph because obviously it's a little graph, I have forced this one to work. So let's graph. I'm gonna do the top one in black and I'll do the bottom one in blue, okay? And then we'll see where they intersect because we could already make that prediction. There will be one solution, one intersection point. So when we graph, we need two things. We need a starting point. If we don't see it, we add the zero. And we need a slope. And our slope should be a fraction. Let me turn this ever so slightly so you can see. Perfecto. Okay, so we're gonna start with our origin, zero, zero. And then our slope is two over one, two on the top, one downstairs. I put the one. You can make anything a fraction by placing a one on the bottom if it's not a fraction already. So the top number is always our rise number because slope is a measurement of rise over run. So we're going to rise up and we're going to run left or right depending on if it's positive or negative. If it's positive, we run to the right, just like positive numbers are to the right on a number line. And if it's negative, we run to the left just like negative numbers are on a number line to the left, okay? So this one's gonna be rise two, go to the right, one. So I'm gonna go up two, bloop, bloop, over one. Up two, bloop, bloop, over one. And same. And we're gonna expand it in the other direction as well. And it should make a nice, beautiful, linear graph. So nice line. I'm gonna use blue for the second one. Again, that's this one. My starting point is negative two. So if that was zero, negative two is right yonder. Perfect. Now our slope needs to be a fraction. And if it's a whole number, we just stick a one on the bottom, not the top, on the bottom, okay? So I'm going to rise four, and because this fraction is positive, I'm gonna run to the right. If this fraction were negative, I would run to the left, but I'm running to the right, so let's do this. We're gonna count at four and take your time. Don't rush this. One, two, three, four over one. Well, that's cool. I just found my intersection. Now, if you don't see it, let me go grab my third color so that you can see it best. So I have green here, right there. There's my, my intersection point. There was one solution. 
There was one intersection point. And your job is to find where that point is. So let's see. Um, I have, do, 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 do. we're going to go straight down to find our X and over to find our Y. So I know that's the number one and that's the number two. And a point is always written X value first and then Y value second. So I have one, two. But you don't have to believe me. You should plug that in. And if it works for both, you know you have the right solution for the system. Now, if that point only worked for one of these, somewhere we made a mistake. This point of one is X, Y is two, should work for the entire system. That means that equation and that equation. So I'm gonna try that now. X is one, Y is two. Two times one is two equals two. Well, that one checks. I know I'm on the right track, but that's not good enough. That just tells me, yes, Teresa, that point is on that line, but it doesn't tell me about the entire system. So my job is to plug this guy into the second one and check it as well. Miss Miller, but I don't want to check my answer. Yeah, I didn't want to do the dishes this morning. Guess what? I did them, <laughs> begrudgingly, <laughs> but I did them. There's a lot of stuff in life that we don't want to do because it's like a chore. But you know what? This is an important chore. Check your answer. Check. Did, did what you just do make sense? It takes like a hot second. But obviously, Miss Miller keeps talking, so it's taking a little longer. So talk less. There you go. Miss Miller unable to do that. Four. Four times one is four minus two. Four minus two is two. Two equals itself? Heck yeah. Check. Check. You are the answer. You will give me five, six, seven, eight, nine points on a test. Test is next week. So be prepared. If you're a period four, six kid, the test is on Thursday. If you're a period 135 kid, the test is on Friday. And your job is to watch these videos. If you haven't been here, you need to get your cuteness on my YouTube channel and watch the videos. If you have been here, watch the videos for a reinforcement. If you have been here and you still need more support, watch them to provide more support or come in at lunch or go into after school tutoring that I talked about. All of these four people are amazing. They're credentialed math teachers. They want to help you. Okay, so get your cuteness in here. Do it. Okay, let's try the next one. Ooh, I see something that's cool. Hey, hey. Now remember, let's check out the slopes. This guy has a slope of one over one. Visual learners, we know there's a one sitting there when we don't see it, okay? So the number in front of X is our slope, and if I don't see a number, I know it's one. But again, we need a fraction, right? So we need one over one. This one, we need one over over one. Ho, ho, ho. What did we just see? I got the same slope. Over here, different slopes. Over in two, different slopes. I knew they would intersect somewhere. Same slope? Ha! Ah, so it's either this, because they're leaning the same way, and they have a different starting point, or they're this, same slope, same starting point. So we either know it's going to be no solution, or all solutions called infinite solutions. So let's give it a go. Oof, okay. I'm gonna do the top one in black. Negative two is my starting point, AKA my white intercept. I'm going to rise one and go to the right one because that fraction, that slope is a positive leaning slope. That means we're gonna go up and move to the right. Up and over, up and over, up and over. I'm gonna expand it because you know, why not? It's not like I'm running out of markers here. Um, I really want to get a good view of what the heck Ola is happening. So there's my first equation. Second equation. I'll do that one in blue. My starting point I don't see, so it must be the origin. Bloop. And my slope is 1 over 1. Hmm. Very interesting. Do you see? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see it? Do you see it? Um, I see something. Mm. Mm hmm. What do you see? Is this a one solution, no solutions, or all solutions? Remember, if it's one solution, that means it's crisscrossing or touching in one spot. I don't see that. And if they never touch, well, there's no solution in our number system that would make that system true. That's what we got here. Because they're not right on top of each other, right? So this is a no solution. No 
solution because there's no intersection point. Cool. That's all you can do, right? There's nothing more. There literally is no answer. They don't touch. They fly by each other. That's about it, okay? Now I'm gonna look at the top little bit and that's where they literally give us the answer and they're just asking, hey, is it true? Is that in fact the answer? And we plug and chug, or also known as evaluate each of these systems. And let's see. Now I'm going to do these quickly. You know, you might want to use a number line or a multiplication chart at home, a calculator if absolutely need be. It is a tool. Not my favorite tool, but yeah, I get that some kids might want to use it. So let's check these three. They're telling me that this is the solution. That means if you graph these, bloop, they're telling me that this is the point of intersection. I don't know if that's true. But if I plug it into the first one and it works, and I plug it into the second one and it works, then I do know for a fact it is the intersection of both of these. If this gets plugged in and it doesn't work for both, maybe it only works for one, maybe it works for neither, it's not the solution of the system, okay? So I like to label because I'm a label girl. That means one will go in place of X and negative one will go in place of Y. So let me write that, you guys can see, yeah. We got truth, kids, but that's not good enough. We have one truth. We need two, right? Okay, let's look at the second one. That guy's gonna go there and that guy's gonna go there. Use parentheses as needed to help you see it best. I got a double negative here, so con cuidado, be cautious. So I have one plus three times one is three. That's four. Is four the same thing as negative two? Is having $4 in your pocket and owing someone $2 the same thing? <clears throat> Let me give you a sound effect. That would be a no. That's no. So that's no. I got a check and an X. That's a yes and that's a no. So overall, I know no. That is not the solution of the system. I know that it is on that line, but it's not on this line anywhere. Okay. Next, X, Y. So I'm going to plug it into the first one. X goes there. Y goes there. So I have 6 times 2 minus negative 1. Yes, because you have a minus and then you're plugging in a minus. So be careful with that double negative. That could be a little tricksy. Double negatives, we turn into a positive. I have 12 plus 1 is 13. 13 equals 13. True. If you have $13 in your pocket and I have $13 in my pocket, we have the same amount of money. We can hit the Dollar Tree and buy 13 things, right? Okay, let's try the next one now. So now we have X is 2 and that guy right there. Cool beans. Double negative. Don't, don't trip out on that guy. So I have 2. 8 times 1 is 8. And then I have 10 equals 10. Yes, $10 is the same as $10. So check, check. Yes, yes. Yes. That means that is the solution of this system. If you type this into Desmos, which is that free graphing program online, just decimals.com, free graphing, right? That would be where they crisscross at two negative one. You should check it out. Check out decimals right now. And last but not least, we've got this beautiful one. We have three times negative two. Two times five equals four. I have negative six plus 10 equals four. 10 take away six is four. Four equals four. Heck yeah. Yeah, that's true. Four bucks is four bucks, period, end of story. Let's check that last dude. Bloop and bloop. So we have negative two plus four times five equals 18. Negative two, we got 20 right here. And 20 take away two is 18. 18 equals 18, heck yeah. We just found the solution of the system. Again, if you've got on Desmos and you type these in and graph them, that is in fact the intersection point. Cool, excellent. Come back for part four, and I'll do the last piece of these notes, okay? Proud of you. Keep doing. Keep going. You can do this, I promise.